I have some TIG welds here that are bad and I'm gonna fix them so they end up looking like this. I'm gonna show you how you can do it so you can look like the hero when fixing some ugly stuff you may come across. When I first started TIG welding, I started out with aluminum. It wasn't the easiest thing to learn in the world, but I eventually figured it out. But when I made the jump to work on stainless steel TIG welding, everything changed and changed for the worse. I could not keep anything under control for the life of me. And I had a really tough time controlling my heat. I've talked about this before, but I wish I could jump in a time machine and go back to myself in the past because I would have killed to know that I could have gone back and redone some of my stuff. So obviously I gotta throw a disclaimer out there and just say that this is something for training. This is something for practice. If you have to follow codes and procedures, this is probably not gonna fly. This is just something so I can show people how to reduce some of their stuff. It's a bit tricky to work on some of these details, but let's take a look at what we got here. Here we see a fillet joint where things have obviously gotten a bit too big and too hot. We see a ton of over oxidization on it and we can see that the heat affected zone is obviously way out of control. Do you know how to read a heat affected zone? Check this video out here. This is probably one of the most important ones. I talk about this video all the time and it goes over exactly how to break that detail down. If you haven't seen that one already, go check it out. But even though this one here, obviously this is a demo, it's been extremely overheated. So what we're gonna do here is try and rework this weld, and make it look good so that it actually can pass as something that looks badass and not trash. <laughs> That's good, I just made that up. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna brush away all of the oxide we can. You can use a stainless steel wire brush. That'll take off the most egregious of this stuff. The best thing that works great is a wire wheel on a grinder. Obviously you have to be careful with this because this can dig into your parent material slightly. So watch out for that. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna do anything to get all of this over oxidization off of the surface. So we have a clean surface to work on again. Unfortunately, this pass has gotten a little bit big for my liking. So we're gonna have to do our makeup pass probably about as big as this one equally or bigger. Essentially our main goal with this one is not to overheat the base material any more than it already has been. I obviously, you've seen on my channel, I prefer to make things as small as possible as far as welding goes, but for a demo, we're gonna make this one work. What I'm doing on this pass here now is running over the existing pass that we want to hide. What I'm doing is I'm making sure I follow a consistent width and keeping everything as straight as I can. I will also be adding a small amount of filler material on top of the existing one, which is gonna to help to reduce the heat input into the base material. Using filler material will always help to reduce the overall heat input into the base material. Like I said, when we're doing something where we don't wanna add any more heat input into the base material, filler material is gonna be something that helps us out a lot with this. It's gonna keep things a little bit cooler. Perhaps we'll be traveling at a little bit faster of a travel speed than the original pass was done at. But again, covering it with proper gas flow and post flow, we're gonna get much better results this time. Take a look again at what it looked like before. We see too much heat input into the base material. Now we have controlled the heat going into it on the makeup pass. And we've smoothed things out a lot nicer than it was originally. If you wanna cover up something that's even wider, like something like this one here, it's also possible to do the same thing but do a weave pattern over top. Doing a weave pattern will also allow you to keep your puddle a little bit smaller and work it from side to side, as opposed to doing one bigger one and just trying to run over the whole thing. Keeping a smaller puddle also with a weave pattern, we can reduce our heat input doing that as well. So again, whatever method you're gonna do this with, filler material and heat input are going to mitigate these problems a lot. Let's try something a little different here. Here we see an outside corner joint. Obviously, too cold, hasn't got through to the other side. Burr, because it's an outside corner joint, obviously adding more filler is just gonna add excessive reinforcement. And excessive reinforcement is gonna spill over the edges. What we're gonna do here is I'm gonna set up my Everlast machine to a pulse setting, or sometimes like I prefer doing a foot pumping technique with the foot pedal. Either way, what we're gonna do is reshape and add a consistent stepping pattern to what we see here already. Now again, what's the main thing we wanna avoid with this? That's right, excessive heat input. Once you clean off all the existing oxide on something like this already, and you have a perfect start to establish a proper width and profile, obviously the start, most important part. What's my saying I always say on my channel? Fill and chill. That's gonna get us a perfect shape right off the bat. Then once we have the proper size and profile we want, all we have to do is make sure we don't move too slow. And especially on this one, because we aren't using any filler material, making sure that we don't add excessive heat input to this one is extremely important. Again, proper speed, proper gas coverage, and an extremely generous post flow in this one. As long as we're paying attention to our overall heat input, we're gonna see this one look much better than it did before. Always remember, the gray stuff that makes our welds look bad sometimes isn't the problem. The gray stuff on our welds is a result of the problem, and the problem is usually excessive heat input. For the two exercises we just looked at here, this is the problem with both of them. It's not a gas problem, 
It's not a cup setup problem, it's excessive heat input. Like I go over with my students, both in person and online, this can be caused by a couple different problems. And the results can sometimes either be an uneven pass or excessive oxide. We just talked a lot about the heat affected zone. Check this video out here. If you haven't seen that one already, go check it out. Go out today and do a random act of kindness for a stranger. My name is Dusty for Pacific Arctic Welding, Bill and Chill. We'll talk soon. Peace.